So here's a great quote to kind of give some perspective to this class. What, which of these do we do the most of? Listening. And yet, what's the thing that we tend to study more in classes? Writing, which is the thing we do least. <laughs> it's kind of messed up, right? You think we talk more about how to be a good listener. You think we talk more about how to communicate better with other people. Well, that's what this class is about. This is one of those rare moments where we're actually focusing on the thing you do the most of. Uh, it's amazing to me and surprising how little we talk about these things in classes. So just uh, something to think about. There is a survey that goes out every year to employers organization, asking them with students who recently graduated from college, what are the skills you are looking for? And this is the, this is the survey. They ask them about these skills and they say, which are the skills that you think are the most important? And this, the survey comes back and I want you to anticipate what you think the survey says. You are going to come back and tell me what you think the ranking should be, okay? Uh, for these surveys, um, employers ranked the following skills in the following way. Now, what I want you to notice is what's first and what's last. First is oral communication skills. Guess what? This class teaches oral communication skills. What's interesting and fascinating to me is that people often underestimate the importance of oral communication skills when looking for jobs. Most people will identify leadership skills as important. What's interesting here is that's not actually at top of the list, is it? Neither is proficiency in field of study. So what, what people often respond, and I think we've seen that here, is they think, well, they're gonna want me to know my field and they're gonna want me to be a leader. No, they're not. Because they recognize that number one, how could you be a leader in the field when you're just graduating from, from college? You're not gonna be a leader in the field. They're not gonna be looking for that from you. That's something you cultivate over time. The reason they're also not that interested in proficiency in the field is because they know you don't know the field that well. Again, you don't have a ton of experience. That's not what they're looking for. They can teach the skills in the job. They can teach you how to operate the machinery or how to you know, operate the phone lines or to fill out the paperwork. They don't have the time to teach you how to communicate either interpersonally or working as a team. So what are the top three skills that you notice? Oral communication, interpersonal communication, and teamwork. Guess what? Those are the focus of this class. So what's fascinating to me often is that people come to this class going, why do I have to take this class? This is just a soft skills class. I communicate all the time. Underestimating the value that this class and the skills that we teach in this class can provide to you in your future career, no matter what it is, no matter what your career is, this is valuable stuff. And I think, you know, the writing skills being low, well, we just heard that, you know, um, people don't write as much as they talk, right? You need to learn how to listen well and, and, and the analytical skills are important as well. So it's about the, the level of the job that you're probably looking at when you first graduate from college. So just wanna be clear, it's not that you don't want leadership skills, it's that that's not what they're expecting you to have as a new college graduate. So um, this is a very, I think, helpful check-in and rem reminder about why this class is often required for certain career fields. These are all the words that would be used to define communication. And if we put them together, it would be the process of using verbal and nonverbal messages to generate meaning within and across various contexts, cultures, and channels. We will unpack that a little bit more um, next class. Uh, but there uh, will be just a brief definition here for you guys. Context is where you communicate, right? So context right now would be a Zoom classroom. Um, and that is dealing who's in the classroom, how are we communicating, where are we communicating, um, and, and when, what time of day. Culture is a kind of a nebulous context. It's kind of another type of context, and that is the characteristics, attitudes, and behaviors of the communicators in that situation. Uh, channel is how we communicate. So right now we're communicating over Zoom. Um, that's the channel. If I were sending you a text message, that would be a different channel. Uh, channel is whatever method we use to communicate. Face-to-face -face is a channel. Lots of different channels. 
There are different types of communication too, and different levels. Interpersonal communication is when we have just two people communicate. Um, and usually it's about maintaining a goal or a relationship. Interpersonal has an entire field of research, and there's actually a class here at the college about interpersonal communication. We cover some aspects of interpersonal communication in this class, but there's a much more in-depth 200 level class if this is something you wanna delve, in, delve into a little more deeply after you're done taking this class. Group communication is three or more people. The dynamics of communication change dramatically when you add more people. So interpersonal is just two, group is three or more. Presentational communication or public speaking is when you have uh, one to many, right? So one speaker speaking to many people. Uh, one way to look at it is you're having a conversation, but instead of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you're having it with many people. So media richness theory is an important theory I just want you to think about. And that is that says the different types of channels that we communicate, the way we communicate when you text or email, that's not as rich as face-to-face. What does that mean? Well, it means that in a face-to-face, -face, we can see and respond to others immediately. When you text, you kind of have to wait, right? You got to wait for someone to respond and maybe they don't really understand what you're saying because they're missing a lot of information. It's not as deep or rich of a channel because you can't see them. You can't, there's a lot of non-verbals that get lost. Like maybe you can't notice if they look worried, their eyes, you can see their eye, but you can't like tell that they've stiffened up a bit. Maybe you can't tell because you're not as close to them. Um, Using nonverbal communication and our own natural speaking style are part of this, but it's also true that we use nonverbal communication to clarify and reinforce messages, right? Um, if you see somebody say to you, uh, hey, you say, hey, how's it going? And they're like, fine. Do they seem fine? Eh, maybe not, right? Whereas if they're like, if you ask, how's it going? And they're like, oh my gosh, it's terrible. Uh, it seem terrible? No. So we check in, we use nonverbals to monitor and moderate and uh, kind of um, influence the message, right? So a nonverbal can, can, can contradict or complement our message. And that is what we take away. And people will go into much more depth about nonverbal communication in the coming weeks and talk about that. All right, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint show here. Um, there's a lot of communication models out there. Um, to explain the basic components of communication, and they show how they relate to each other. And the linear model is basic model that came out in the 1950s, which was like, we have a message, we are the source, we communicate it through a channel, and the receiver receives it. That's pretty simplistic. Since then, we've realized that there's a lot of things that influence communication. First and foremost, what do you notice is different between the linear and interactive? The linear model is message conveyed. It's kind of robotic in some ways, right? The interactive model takes into account things like feedback, okay? So when you communicate, you notice other people's feedback. Sometimes their feedback is a lack of feedback, right? So if I'm like communicating right now over Zoom, um, you know, I'm not gonna call anybody out, but I can tell when people are kind of look like they're not really paying attention, that's feedback to me. OK, um, when you are communicating with someone and they're like checking their phone while you talk, it's really hard to communicate with them, isn't it? Because you're like, they're like, oh, yeah, uh huh. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. OK. They don't really seem that interested, do they? They're giving you feedback that whatever you're saying isn't that important. Oh, oh, yeah. OK. Right. So that's part of the deal is that we pay attention to feedback. Feedback isn't irrelevant. Um, the other thing I want to share is that when you are in the middle of a communication channel, you have a channel that you send information. That same channel might be the way that people send things back, but it might not be. Like if in this presentation, I may have said something that somebody then emails me later to get feedback to me saying, when you said X, Y, Z, I was a little confused. That's feedback. That's delayed feedback, right? Um, that's something that the interactive communication model takes into effect. The, um, the other thing you'll notice in here is what's, what's the little, there's like a little kind of a, a lightning bolt and it has the word noise, right? Noise is anything that interferes with communication. 
anything that interferes. It's not just noise, like, you know, something you hear. Noise can be something you hear, like if there's a really loud jackhammer and you can't really hear what people are saying, that's noise that's interfering with the communication. But there's other types of noise. And next class, I'm gonna go into depth a little bit more about the different types of noise, because there's a lot of things that can interfere with communication. Um, and it's important for us to think about, like even just in the Zoom class, like if you're tired or you're hungry or like you scarf down your breakfast too quickly and you got maybe a little indigestion, that would be noise. The transactional communication model is the third communication model. And what's this one gets even more complicated than the uh, interactive model, right? We see uh, that it's got a whole bunch of other stuff going on. And stop you here with and leaving you with the following parting thought, which is communication is clearly important. It's important for you in your personal life. It's important for you in your professional life. And why not study it? Because there's absolutely no reason that we can't learn better what we think we know already, right? And just even perfecting the skills that we have in terms of listening and group work and um, public speaking are all part of what we're gonna embark in this semester. So um, thank you and uh, welcome aboard.